Father God. We've crossed over, Father God. Help us to get focused this year, Lord, on pleasing you, on honoring you, Father God, on trusting you, Lord. Build our faith this year, Lord, Father God, so that we can move mountains, Lord. You said with the faith of a mustard seed, Father God, we could make the impossible possible, Lord. So now, Father God, we're going to tap into that faith. We're going we're gonna to plug into you, Lord, Father God. We're going to focus on your word. We're going to focus on, on your life. We're going to focus on not on our inabilities, Father God, but what you can do and how you can change situations. How you can, Father God, can, can, can mend the brokenhearted, can heal the sick, can produce, Father God, greatness out of something that's been rotten and spoiled for so long, Lord. Bless us as a mind, Father God, as a church, Lord, to just want to please you, to glorify you, Father God, with our praise, with our lives. Father God, help us on our jobs. Strengthen us in our homes. Help us to, 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 to not just say it, but to do it, Lord. To walk in it be about it father god this year help us to focus on you lord father god and not and not but where we fall short lord but where you lift us up we're not walking this walk by ourselves father god you are carrying us in this lord encourage us father god right now father god encourage us right now father god bless us bless our our praise team as they come forward bless the musicians father god bless the atmosphere father god Bless the message, Father God. The, 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 the word says that you're, 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 you're mysterious to us, Father God. You're hidden, Father God. But reveal to us, Father God, something new today, Lord, so we can get closer to you. We can understand you a little better, Father God. Bless us with your wisdom and your knowledge and understanding of the word. Bless us, Father God, so that we can go forth later today, later tomorrow, this week, Father God, and feast on your word sitting at our cubicles and start shouting hallelujah because we know you are good and your mercy endureth forever bless us this day father god bless our pastor as he's driving down these streets father god get him here father god open up the streets father god clear a path so that he can get here on time father god bless those that are in route father god that they need to be here that need to be in your presence in 2020 Help us to get closer to you. Help us to encourage the people that we walk with about your goodness. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. Not for ourselves, Father God, but for you. We praise you. Let someone be filled with the Holy Ghost today, Lord. Let someone speak in an unknown tongue, Father God, that glorifies you.
before. Yeah. I gotta shout louder than before. Everybody say to freedom. Sing a little louder. Everybody say, oh, 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 oh. I want to jump higher than before. I got to scream louder than before. Let me ask you something. Did anybody decide to go into the new year doing something different? Come on, if you did, come on, shout out, say hallelujah. I'm going to go into this new decade doing something different. That means that everything that we did last Sunday, we're having a new attitude this Sunday. I'm going to clap louder than before. I'm going to sing louder than before. I'm going to jump higher than before. I'm going to scream louder than before. Come on and join in with us. Everybody, come on. I want to clap louder than before. Yeah. I want to sing louder. Everybody say, oh.
free, I'm free, I'm free. Yeah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We made it over. Hallelujah. Into the new decade. Bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and testify. Say, I made it. I made it. I made it. Yeah. We all know this one. Just repeat after me. Come on. Say, I don't know how I made it here. I don't know how I made it here. It was by the grace of God. It was by the grace of God. Say, I don't know how I made it here. I don't know how I made it here. It was by the grace of God. It was by the grace of God. Oh, say I don't know how I made it here. I don't know how I made it here. Oh, it's by the grace of God. Oh, it's by the Can you sing that? Say I don't know how I made it here. I made it here. I know it's by the grace of God. I know it's by the grace of God. I made it. I made it by the grace of God. And I'm here.
believe that you did it. You're victorious every single time. Hallelujah. 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 One more time, let's your voice say, I'm made. Say, I'm here. Say, I'm made. By the blood of Jesus. Even if you're seated, that's 
okay, open up your mouth. Say, glory and honor is to you. Say, glory and honor is to Without the singers, let me check. Say, glory and honor is to him. Let me hear you say. Yeah. Come on. Say, glory and honor is to Everybody say glory and honor is due. Come on, one more time. Say glory and honor is to him. Yeah. And honor is say he's the source.
Ash is standing all over the building, stretching her hands across the aisle, and leaving no one untouched. I like standing uh, in my office and I love the fact that Brother Terry stands is, is right there by the door. You know, see, it's wonderful to hear a true worshiper and a true praiser going in. And he, he gives it everything he has. So squeeze that hand, say, magnify the Lord with him. <laughs> and let us exalt his name together. See, when you've been through some stuff, you really don't care uh, whether folks are comfortable with your praise. Look at your neighbor real quick and say, I'll make you real uncomfortable with my praise. Just want to serve you notice that I, I you know, you can get loud. Amen. And you can, you know, you, you can bump them a little bit. But see, when you really thank God and you praise God for what he has done for you and what he is doing for you and what he has promised to do for you, then you don't mind making a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Open your mouth and shout with everything you got. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we give you glory. All the glory. All the praise. Surely, if it had not been for you, Lord, that was on our side, the enemy would have swallowed us up quick. But Lord, you didn't give us over to the will of our enemies. As the song says, you didn't see fit to let none of these things be. And Lord, we thank you. We honor you as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. As the only living God, our Savior, our everything. We praise your name. Now, Lord, as we're worshiping you, we thank you in advance for healing sick bodies, for restoring our joy. We thank you for giving us peace that passeth all understanding. We thank you for turning situations around while we praise you, while we worship you. And we, Lord, praise you for everything that you're doing. And, Lord, we receive everything you have for us. And Lord, this will be a year and a decade of elevation of receiving double portions hallelujah of your anointing and we thank you now in jesus name amen 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 give god glory come on give god glory come on give god glory come on give god glory give god glory hallelujah you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We thank God for each and every one of you. We want to wish you all a very happy new year, happy new decade, happy new you. Amen. We thank God for each of you and we praise you for just, uh, praise God for just allowing us to be in this place uh, one more time. And, um, uh, I'm thankful for um, uh, how he has been moving uh, in spirit and life, and certainly uh, I'm honored to serve as your pastor, and uh, I thank God for each of you. Amen. And I'm praying for you and believing God that this will be the greatest year of your life. I can see. <laughs> 
See, I'm going to preach about it in a second. You see, some of y'all are like, I, you know, I'm pretty cool with last year. No, no, listen, listen, greater, amen, is, is, is in your future. Amen. Better is in your future. More is in your future. So I praise God for that, and I praise God for uh, everybody that's here. And we thank God for those that are joining us online, and we bless God for those that joined us uh, in person uh, on New Year's Eve. And uh, we had a marvelous service. We had four. Amen. We had a marvelous service. We had four young people that went down in Jesus' name on New Year's Eve, and God is good. I was struck by the fact that they were millennials, so that was always, that was exciting. You know, so, amen. So we thank God for his goodness and his mercy. Let's run to Philippians chapter number three. I alluded to this the other night, and, uh, and the Lord is, is going to bring us uh, where we need to be. And uh, so, amen. We thank God for his goodness. Philippians 3, and I would that you'd focus with me on verse number 12. Verse number 12, amen. Amen. Verse number 12 of Philippians chapter 3. And um, when you have it, can you say amen? Amen. Now, now, be a kind neighbor in this new year and share uh, the scripture with your neighbor if they don't have their Bible. Philippians 3 and 12 reads, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. There's a reason why he saved you. Amen. Five of y'all got that. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And the church say amen. amen. In the Amplified Version it reads, not that I've already obtained it, this goal of being Christ-like, or have already been made perfect, but I actively press on, I actively press on, uh-huh, so that I may take hold of that perfection for, with Christ, for which Christ Jesus took hold of me and made me his own. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I have made it my own yet. Look at somebody say, not yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the heavenly prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Can the church say amen? Amen. amen. Look at your neighbor and say, this year, this decade, reach for it. Amen. Now push that neighbor and say, move forward. Until I'm moving forward. Amen. Give God glory all over the building. Come on. Come on. Give God glory. Tap somebody again. Say, reach for it. Amen. It's important uh, to, to grasp a few things uh, as we embark on what's next. Uh, it's important for us to, to understand that uh, God has strategically positioned us uh, to move into greater. And um, sometimes it's important for us to uh, kind of get our bearings at the beginning of the year. Um, sometimes the problem we have is that we're still 
kind of dealing with lingering effects from last year. Um, and uh, Bishop Jakes, in a marvelous message on New Year's Eve, was talking about how the Lord operates in decades. Amen. He, you see, some of us are still going from year to year. Sometimes it's from month to month, sometimes week to week, and then sometimes we're just trying to get through the day. But um, when you understand how God views things, he moves. And of course, even societally and historically, things change every 10 years. It's kind of 10-year cycles. And so when we came to the end of the decade the other day, you're realizing that there's some things that happened in that past decade and even things that happened in 2019 that are still affecting you now. And that means, Mother Hamilton, some things that are good and some things that were bad. And, and, and unfortunately, we tend to magnify or let the bad things linger uh, longer than they should. Uh, one of the things that was interesting in his message, he preached about and he talked about some of the things I just talked about last week the Lord gave me in terms of Gilgal and how the Lord was rolling the reproach off of us and how the Lord had taken all of the shame, all of the guilt, all the issues, he'd taken it off of us. And when you understand that he's done that for you, then you don't need to continue to have that same, let it have that same effect on you that that it did when it happened. Amen. What I mean by that is there are times where, you know, we still kind of hesitate in terms of our uh, passion or in terms of our, amen, desire to move into the thing that's next because we're still a little hesitant, sometimes troubled, sometimes issues have made us kind of uh, hesitant. We kind of, we're a little weary, we're wary of how things can move and so it's natural, it's human nature, but at the same time you got to realize that you're operating at a whole nother level spiritually. So by faith, I've got to move into the things that God has for me. And I can't be so attached to even my successes of the last year or the last decade that I get comfortable and like where I am. Because uh, as wonderful as you feel you are right now, you've got some more wonderfulness to come. Amen. I know that's not a word, but I'm just saying. So, so Paul, in, in terms of how he was approaching the Philippian church, he, he started off by letting them know that, that what God was doing was going to work. This was a very positive letter that he wrote to them, and he was trying to get them to be uh, able to understand that God was working out everything on their behalf. In fact, he tells them right off the bat, he says, I'm always in prayer for you. I'm making requests known. I'm, I'm praying for all of you. He said, because your fellowship from the time you started, our, our relationship has been good until now. But he said, I'm confident of this very thing, that he that has begun a good work in you will perform Form it until the day of the Lord. Uh, I mean, nobody got happy on that part. Uh, in other words, what God has started in you, whatever he has placed in you, he's going to do it until the day of the Lord. The reason that's important is because we have to start understanding, and I'll talk about it in a minute, uh, but we have to start understanding that we're saved not for our own purpose. It's not about us. It's not about amen being popular. It's about understanding that there is a reason why God put his hand on you. There's a reason why you are not an accident. You were not born to the family you were born to. You're not coming to, to spirit and life by accident. Even if you're not a member, you don't just happen to stumble into one of our churches. You just don't. This is a God thing. This is something where the Lord, amen, ordained it. And he said, whatever God has
has started in you, no matter how long, thank you, Holy Ghost, no matter how long it has been on pause, no matter how long it seems like it's been on hold, no matter how delayed it seems like, the Lord will perform, he will perfect that which concerns you, and he will perform that good work that he started in you until the day of the Lord. I wish I had about five people that understood that, that uh, Paul said, I'm confident of that. He's, I'm not even guessing about that. I know that God will finish what he started. Uh, hallelujah. No matter what has happened, no matter how bad it looks like it may not come to pass, the Lord will finish what he started. Uh, so whatever promise he made, whatever dream he placed in your mind, uh, whatever idea he gave you, He's going to bring it to pass. Can somebody say amen? Uh, and so he begins to tell them and understand that there are some things that have happened even in his, in his own life. Uh, and he says, I've learned. And see, in 2019 was a time where you learned, amen, some things. He, he said, what happened is, he said, I've, I realized that since I've been under house arrest, some people have gotten bold about how they feel. Some people have reacted to it differently. And now we live in a society where it's instant reaction. There's instant responses. There's instant stuff that's going on all the time. No matter what you do, if you do nothing, folks going to react to you doing nothing. If you do something, they're going to react to that. And what we are gotten caught up in is, learn, is, is, re, is, is, is taking in all of these reactions. We have internalized so much. And so what the Lord did was he used, amen, 2019. Team, amen, to send us through some stuff. And when you go through some things, when you go through some storms, you start finding out things not only about God, not only about yourself, but you find out some stuff about the people that you are connected to. Hallelujah. You find out who your real friends are. You find out who's really in your corner. You find out who is really low-key just waiting to see you fall. You have found all that stuff out. And, and St. Paul was not tripping on people. Uh, one of the things the Lord had to deliver us from in 2019, and some of us are still trying to get there, but what the Lord had to do in 2019 was deliver you from people. Hallelujah. He had to deliver you from public opinion. Uh, he had to get you to where you didn't care so much about folks liking you or whether or not they were they approved of your life or whether or not they were in your corner. He got to the point where I don't care if I got to walk this, uh, just me and Jesus, I'm going to do it by the grace of God. It's quiet in here. It's all right. Uh, uh, what he told me, he said, and what I mean by that, Paul was telling them, he said, listen, uh, he said, I'm glorying in the fact that I'm going through some stuff. And he said, some folks have gotten bold now. They thought that since I'm locked up, that now all of a sudden they can take, the, take my place. They can step into the spotlight for a while. Be careful about jumping into spotlights and on platforms because everybody's not ready to be in the spotlight. It's quiet in here. And so, but he said, I'm not worried about it. He said, they, some have uh, gotten bolder. Uh, and then others that are really on, in my, on my side, he said, they, they have gotten confident too because they said, we got to take up the slack because Paul is under house arrest. So we got to take our, amen, we got to step up a little bit uh, on his behalf. Uh, but he said, and some are preaching out of contention. They're trying to add affliction to my bonds. Some people think that they post a whole lot of stuff about what they're doing, that you're going to feel some type of way about it. Well, you did when you were immature. But since you've been through 2019, you can post whatever you like. Amen. You can do whatever you like. You can live your life. Live your best life. Because I ain't worried about you. I've got my own race to run. And i got my own blessings and levels to get to. So I ain't going to let you throw no shade on me because I ain't paying you no attention. Paul said, I'm not worried about that. He said, what has happened has fallen out. He said, oh, it's, it's, it's really interesting. He said, they're, they, they're, it's a furtherance of the gospel. So Paul said, am I going to trip on that? He said, no. He said, I'm going to be happy whether Christ, because Christ is being preached. So whether they're doing it for the wrong reason or they're doing it for the right reason, I'm going to shout anyhow. And I'm going to keep on doing what God called me to do. He says, why? How can you do that, Paul? He said, 
because I know that this is going to turn out to my salvation. I know that in the end, I'm going to be saved. I know that when all is said and done, that this is actually going to work in my favor. I hear you, Holy Ghost. The Lord wants you to start fixing your mind on this. As crazy as 2019 was, it's working out for your salvation. Even stuff that was crazy that happened, he said, that too is going to turn out to my salvation. How? Through your prayers and the supply of the Holy Spirit. In other words, I know that I'm not going to be ashamed no matter what happens. Amen. In other words, I'm at another level now. And 2019 made us, it trained us. It made us become more focused. That's why the word the Lord gave me for 2020 was, amen, clear focus. Amen. It made you more aware, more alert. And now you are locked in on what is important. Amen. Don't just be locked in in January, honey. Be locked in in March. Be locked in in July. Be locked in in October. Because it's going to be important that you maintain this intensity right now and throughout the year. Because if you stay locked in, it'll take you from glory to glory from victory to victory, from strength to strength. Uh, open your mouth and let me hear your blessing. Paul said, I know I got an earnest expectation and a hope. That's what we carried out of 2019. We carried an earnest expectation and a hope. In other words, I'm leaning forward, expecting God to do great things. And so he began to talk to them a lot, teaching them how to be like Christ. In other words, have the right mindset. He said, because you got to have the right, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who thought it not robbery to be equal with God. How, in other words, in other, I'm already in essence God, but he made himself of no reputation. He emptied himself of all his godliness and became just like you and I. I wish I had about five people that understood that he became like you and I so that we could become like him. Hallelujah. He said, I empty myself out. But he said, when you empty yourself out, and then God will highly exalt you. That's why some of you in here right now ought to get ready for elevation because 2019 humbled you. But when you are humbled in the sight of God, he will exalt you in due time. I feel like somebody's getting ready to have an exaltation. You're getting ready to be raised to another level. And when you get raised to this level this time, amen, you ain't going to be pushed out of it. You're not going to be overwhelmed because you are ready. You are prepared because you've been through enough to where it ain't going to phase you like it would have phased you if you, it got a couple of years ago. The words, I know how to, you know how to handle it now. Open your mouth and let me hear you bless the name of the Lord if you're ready for elevation. He says, but also understand that not only did he get a name above every name, he said, but now understand, since Jesus had that mindset, he says, you work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. In other words, you got work to do. Amen. Put your work clothes on. Let's go to work. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm a meddle with you now. Since you all are looking at me like I'm crazy. Amen. The gyms are packed right now. You know why they're packed right now? Because everybody, they saw them Peloton commercials and they decided it's time to get myself together. Uh, and the gyms are packed throughout the first few weeks of January. Amen. Everybody in there just grabbing a hold of equipment ain't got no idea how to use nothing. Just hurting themselves trying to lose all the weight that they gained over 45 years and they trying to lose it in 45 minutes uh, but understand this I mean, what's the real test is going to be what happens when you step into the, the first week of February it starts thinning out at the gym everybody like the amen Spongebob all right I got it. I'm, I'm heading out all of a sudden now you're heading out of the gym you got other things to do because you couldn't maintain 
mean uh, that intensity for the whole year? Well, I got news for you. Tap somebody say baby steps. Then little by little, you ain't going to lose it all at once because you didn't gain it all at once. And you got to know how to maintain your level of intensity. This is not a sprint. This is a long distance marathon race. And you're going to have to make sure you're ready for the long haul. Open your mouth and let me hear you praise him. Watch this. And if you don't know how to humble yourself, life has a way of, of making you alter your life or change your life. Because most of us won't do any changes voluntarily. Because if we low-key are honest with ourselves, we kind of like who we are. We kind of low-key dig how we will flow. We like how we operate. Uh, but honey, don't get satisfied with your wonderful self. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you, you can do better though. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all ain't going to help me. Amen. See, sometimes we like to get lock, locked in on a certain way of doing things. When we get locked in on who we are, we think we have already arrived. And Paul is going to, amen, and abuse you of that notion. He's going to get rid of that thought in your mind. Because he said, I got a reason to brag if I had to. I could talk about how good I am. Amen. Sometimes you got to understand that. That the Lord has been good to you. You've got to acknowledge how good God has been. You've got to acknowledge where he's brought you from. You've got to be able to say God is good to me. Through my ups and downs, my highs and lows. He's gave me some stuff to work with. Y'all ain't going to help me in here. I ain't got to say you got to be all, you know, that, that false humility. You've got to understand what you're working with. Hallelujah. And then give somebody a high five and say, I am bringing a lot to the table. Oh, uh, y'all, that was a wrong neighbor. Try another neighbor. Say, neighbor, I, I got something to work with. Uh, but understand, you can't be so satisfied with where you are. Because the Lord told me to tell you, he has even better for you. He has even greater for you. And part of our problem is we got stuck in a place. But what the Lord does is he lets life mess you up. He lets life start to get you to adjust yourself. I'm going to share it here. I told him at 8.30 service, uh, there was a time in my early 20s, amen, and I, of course, I'm, I, I've am i been newly married and, you know, we've been rolling and, and we were over mom and dad's house and I was sitting in the, my father's chair, the big chair, amen, in front of the television on a Sunday afternoon after service and my wonderful brother Daryl, who happens to be here, amen, walked behind me, and he looked at the back of my head, he said, hey, bro, hey, you getting a little thin up there, and much to my surprise, he wasn't lying, and so I realized that, and this is what we do, we start making adjustments. I used to go to Stylesville Barbershop over there on Van Nuys. And as I would go over there, I told Fred, all right, man, what you need to do is even that up. So get it as even as you can with what's low. So it'll look like I meant to do that. Y'all ain't gonna help me. So as he fade me up, and it worked for a while. I wish I had somebody in here. It worked for a while. But then one day, Fred, I don't know what he was on, but Fred decided that it was time to stop all this low and foolishness. And he cut all my hair off. Clipped it all the way down. And at first, I called myself, as my mother would say, I called myself being upset. But then life hit me and said, this might be the right look for you. It wasn't intentional. But life has a way of making you make some other adjustment so that you ain't walking around here with a cold of 
sack in your head. Hallelujah. The Lord used 2019 to make you make some adjustments because you weren't going to do it intentionally. But God is always intentional about what he does and what he allows in your life. And if he didn't stop you, you would have wrecked your life and you would have gotten so far off track that you never would have recovered. But give your neighbor a high five and say, neighbor, I made it. And I made it for a reason. Because God's getting ready to move me to another level. And I learned how to be intentional like he's intentional. I learned how to do things by his will. Open your mouth and shout hallelujah. Times of my life taught me some lessons last year. And the last decade taught you some lessons. So then Paul starts saying, you know what? If I wanted to, I could really brag about all of my accomplishments. Because I have a great resume. But what he tells them first in chapter 3, he says, I want you to beware of dogs. You know, somebody say, don't focus on them, but watch them. 2019 exposed some contrary people. It exposed who was with you and then who was out to attack you. Hallelujah. It's one thing to stumble down a street and not know there's a dog there. But look at somebody say there are dogs out here. Be careful. There's a lot of wildlife out here. He said, be careful about it. Don't focus on them. See, sometimes that's what we do. We start focusing on the haters. Let me tell y'all something. Shake somebody's hand and say, you ain't rich enough to have no haters. No, that was a wrong neighbor. Look at somebody say, you ain't got no real haters. You just got negative people around you. And you need to stop paying attention to them. Hallelujah. We focus on doing this and you doing stuff to get back at your haters instead of doing things according to the will of God. Don't worry about haters. Don't worry about who likes you. Okay, I know, I know, I know. See, real maturity, you get to a point where you don't care. I don't care if you like me. I don't care if you call me. I don't care. See, see, so much care about likes. That's what we put stuff on. We've posted to get likes, to get attention. And the Lord said, he said, beware of dogs because some of the people that are liking your posts are dogs. He said, beware of them. Beware of concision. He said, beware of those that folks that are opposed to us. Because we're the circumcision, which worship the God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus. And we don't put no confidence in the flesh. Oh, God, help me. Lean on somebody say, ain't nobody bragging about your flesh. Oh, God, help me. Don't put any confidence in the flesh. Don't put any confidence in anybody else's flesh. And sure don't put no confidence in yours. I know I got, I only had 10, about 25 people that were rolling with me on that one. Look at somebody say, as bad as your flesh is, it ain't no good. As dressed up as it is right now, and mom is styling the day, by the way. And no matter how styling she is, amen, under that hat is her flesh. And no matter what happens with your flesh, it ain't no good thing in it. Hallelujah. Because this flesh is so raggedy, it will do some of anything and everything. Hallelujah. But Paul said, if I if anybody could brag on their flesh. He said, I could. He said, because if I was looking at things from a fleshly standpoint, he said, realize this, uh, you know, if I could, if, I, if anybody would trust their flesh, he said, I would. He said, you know what? I, I mean, I'm circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin. He said, I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrews as touching the law, blameless. Uh, he said, at, wait a minute. 
He said, as touching the law, I'm blameless. Most of us in this room right now can't say that. Because some of us were speeding, getting hit. But watch this. He said, concerning the zeal, he said, I'm touching the law. He said, I'm a Pharisee, actually. He said, I'm a Pharisee. Concerning the zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is from the law, blameless. He said, but whatever was gained to me, I counted loss. Touch my say, take the loss on that one. Take the loss. Whatever I thought I had going for me on my resume, he said, I counted loss. Oh, God, help me. See, that's intentional thinking right there. He said, I counted all loss. He said, yeah, doubtless, I count all things but loss. Why? For the excellency. I'm about to preach in a moment, I promise. For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things. I've lost everything. He said, but I consider it dung or garbage or waste. It's nothing. Why, Paul? Because I want to win Christ. Hallelujah. Lead us on it, but you got to win Christ. Hallelujah. He said, I count it all dung. He said, and I'm going to be found in him. Not with my own righteousness, which is of the law, but of that which is through faith of Christ. G- of Christ. He said, of knowledge of God, which is by faith, that I may know him. Hallelujah. He said, what do you want, Paul? I want to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. I want to be made conformable to his death. If by any means I might obtain the resurrection of the dead. In other words, give somebody a high five. He said, I want to go to heaven. Lord, I'm just to give my high five. He said, but I got to make it to heaven. Tell somebody else, I gotta see Jesus. That's what Paul said. I gotta see Jesus. I don't care about stuff. I don't care about likes. I don't care about people. I just want Jesus. Because if I get Jesus, he'll give me stuff. If I get Jesus, he'll put the right people in my life. I just need him. He said, that's why. What I have to do, I can't consider that I made it. Give somebody a high five and say, I ain't made it yet. That was the wrong name, but tell somebody, say, I ain't there yet. But what I'm doing is, I ain't perfect, but where I am is, what I do is, I forget what's behind me. I forget the past, and I'm pressing. I'm reaching. I'm forgetting those things which are behind. And I'm reaching for what's next. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, reach for it. Reach for it. Press for it. Try for it. Move for it. Live for it. Let it go and reach. Hallelujah. He said, I I haven't already got, I haven't got there yet. Just my son, I ain't there yet. See, here's the problem. Some of us think we've arrived. And when you think you've arrived, you stop trying. When you get secure in your status then you stop trying to get better see that's why sometimes a loss can be good because if you lose then it means you got some work to do that's why the Lord let you lose some stuff in 2019 because he's going to make you go after him he touched all the stuff that was a distraction 
that you were attached to. Come on, Holy Ghost. He touched it. He messed with it. Because now you had to realize, well, but I still have Jesus. Sometimes you've lost people and it's painful to lose people. But the Lord says, mm, I'm moving another prop. Oh God, thank you, Lord. Just the Lord just spoke something to me. He said, I'm changing the scene. You know when they're doing a movie or a TV show, they have certain sets that they have built. And they move these sets around on rollers. They can, they, it's in the same space, but they can move. I hear you, Holy Ghost. You're in the same space, but the scene has changed. I hear you, Lord. My God. The Lord has just given this to us right now. He said, what I did in 2019, you were comfortable operating and acting in that scene. But what I did was, I shifted the scene on you. So then you had to change your costume. Well, hallelujah. When we were over at my daughter's job and we were looking at the different sets. And they had how to get away with murder. I saw that set. And when we saw that set, they had the courtroom scene, the set. Then there was the kitchen. And you're walking out of one thing. And you say, and it looks like this is, oh, this is a wonderful house, it's a wonderful kitchen. You walk around the corner, and it's a courtroom. You walk around another corner, it's an office space. But it's all in the same space. But what they did was he shifted the scene on, God help me. The Lord said, I let the scene be shifted. And so now you have to make some adjustments. So once he has you making adjustments, he said, now the scene is this. Paul shows you. The scene now is we're in a race. And Tuesday night, I told you, lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. And run with patience. <laughs> what Paul was saying was, I'm, I'm, I got my mind on a fixed point. I'm looking ahead. And I'm locked in on the goal. He said, it's not a, a, a continuous, it should have been mainly said, I, I press, but I'm pressing. Which means I'm continually leaning forward. I, we, have, we have some forward sprinters in here. And when you are a sprinter, you have to have a forward lean. You don't run. Y'all ain't caught it leaning backwards. You run like this. That's what uh, Kenny Smith and them said. They always knew when it was time to retire. When they were on a fast break. And usually on a fast break with the basketball, you are in sprint mode. He said, but he noticed it was time to, to hang him up when he looked behind him and he saw the young people coming like this and he realized he was already in his top gear. It's about time for me to stop because now they're catching in their mind that they can all catch him. See, in the past, if you got out front, they're like, well, ain't no sense in me running because he, he got a breakaway. But when they looking at you like this, that means they're coming for you. Y'all ain't helping me. He said, I saw I'm leaning. Paul said, I'm leaning forward. And I'm reaching. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbors and get you a forward lean. Because we're running the race now. He said, what I'm doing is, he said, I'm trying to grasp the reason God has laid hands on me, laid hold on me. But then here's what it is. I'm going to give you this. And it tells us, and we're done. Ignatius, the, the philosopher, he said, you know, what, what is deposit? It's a prize out front. A prize of money is distinct from a crown. 
But understand, he said, but you got to be, be temperate as God's athlete. The prize is incorruption and eternal life. Chris Sultan said, he that runs, watch this, looks not at the spectators, but at the prize. Look at someone say, you've been looking at spectators and seeing how people responded to you. He said, but if you're really running, you ain't looking in the stands. Y'all are going to help me. Look at someone say, focus, focus, focus. He said, looks not at the spectators, but at the prize. Whether they be rich or poor, if one mock them, applaud them, insult them, throw stones at them, if one plundered their house, wait a minute. See, you could be so locked in on the race, you won't hear whether they're cheering you, booing you, throwing stuff at you. If they're coming for your house, you ain't got time. Look at those, I'm in the race now. I'm in the race. I'm, I'm in training. I ain't got time. That's why you ain't got time to worry about people. You got to have laser focus. You got to have tunnel vision. I see the prize. Give somebody a high five. I see the prize though. He says, he is not whatever the runner is. They see his children. If they see the children or wife or anything whatsoever, the runner is not turned aside, but is concerned only with his running and winning the prize. He that runneth stoppeth nowhere. Trust my say, can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> Did he told you? Can't stop, won't stop. Says he said, listen. He, 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 since if he be a little remiss, all is lost. He that runneth relaxeth in no respect before the end. But then most of all, watch this, here's where we are done, stretches forth over the course. Look at your neighbor and say, get on your feet and reach for it. Come on, everybody, as you're standing all over, you got to reach. You're stretching and straining yourself to get to the end. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbors. I got to get there. As you grab those hands. See, part of our problem and the why the Lord gave us clear focus this year. A lot of us have vision, but we have vision. We're seeing too much. You're seeing everything. You're noticing everybody else. You're noticing what they're doing, where they're going. And the Lord says, man, you got to focus. Tuesday night, he said, looking unto Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith. But then what we've noticed is that some of us celebrate too soon. I've seen there are videos out there. One in particular I saw last week, there was a runner that was finishing a marathon. And he had been out in front. And so as he's getting to the finish line, he kind of starts easing up, decelerating a little bit because he figured he was so far ahead. But then what he didn't realize there was somebody coming that was finishing strong. So while he's easing up, he's decelerating. The other runner was accelerating and caught and passed him right at the tape. Another time, that was a marathon. This other time, a guy was running a mile or some long distance race in a stadium. And he had the nerve to, he was so far ahead, he starts pumping up the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was going, he's like, yeah, come on. Pump it up. And see, some of us want, are trying to get people to celebrate with us 
before the race is over. Y'all missed it. Oh, we gotta, we gotta have a party for. Wait, wait, wait. What, what, what are we celebrating? In in five years, what? Well, the race ain't over. A lot can happen in five years. So he starts celebrating, doing like this, and didn't see the runner that was focused. See, the focused one ain't worried about the crowd. He didn't worry about the guy over here celebrating next to him. I'm going to keep on going. And there's a, the video is so clear, it's so funny because there's a moment where he sees himself on the big board and he sees the guy coming. And he realizes, uh-oh, I should have been finishing. But since I was so busy celebrating, this guy has beaten me now. And he, and, he, and he panicked. He was like, oh. And then realized you came in second because you celebrated too soon. What God has for us is amazing because what he's done is he's ordained first place for us. But he's, it's going to be first place for those that can lock in and not be distracted and can forget squeeze that hand and say there's a gift in forgetting there's a blessing in being able to forget those things which are behind which means success and failure is behind you and looking forward Father in the name of Jesus we bless your name for helping us to lock in, to focus, to be aware of only your voice and the goal that's ahead of us. Lord, we press. We're reaching. We're stretching. And Lord, as painful as the years of training may have been, It'll be worth it all when we see you. We're pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We're straining, Lord, with everything we have to be able to make it across the line. Lord, you have set us up for not only a great year but a great decade thank you Lord don't let us get caught up in enjoying what we want now that we neglect what's coming help us to stay focused help us to realize why you apprehended us Help us to grasp what you have grasped us for. Now, Lord, we're not here for ourselves, but we have a divine purpose. And there is a divine plan. Your divine hand is on our life, and there is a divine plan you've ordained for our lives. Thank you, Lord. We receive it now. Give us strength. Give us focus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give God glory. Open your mouth and put your mouth with that hand, praise, and give him some glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, ministry team. Some need to walk down here right now and just say, I need the Lord to do something for me. How many of y'all really are following him and moving forward. This is where God has taken us. Hallelujah. Don't be caught up in how wonderful you are in this level because there's more to it. Amen. Give God glory. You made all things new. Yes, you 
bless you. Give God glory all over the building. Come on. Thank you, ministry team. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a praise. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Uh, we thank God. And if there are any first-time visitors we didn't get a chance to acknowledge you, we certainly thank God for you. If you're here, you can just wave your hand. We want to be able to be a blessing to you and to uh, let you know we thank God for you. Amen. We appreciate you. Um, tomorrow at 7.30 at our Palmdale location, we will be finishing up, we're finishing up this week the series entitled Talking Loud and Saying Nothing. Yeah, we, we're doing a series. We're going to be, this is going to be the last one we're going to move into our next. Sam got the, he, 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 he said that's the last chance he going to have to play that right quick. See, see, see. The hour is far spent, but like a dull knife, just ain't cutting. All right, anyway, all right. Mm -mm. So tomorrow at 7.30, we're finishing up the series in Palmdale, and we'll be finishing it up on Tuesday. Uh, right here after our 7 p.m. prayer at 7.30, we will be having our Bible study. Uh, please get uh, to class, get this class. And that's one of the things you can start improving uh, is how you get these Bible study series and get these lessons because they will bless your life. And you, and you need to, I was telling the other night and uh, on the TNT, 
I talked about the four things we're going to need to succeed. You need to have your faith intact. You increase your faith. Increase your prayer life. Amen. Increase the word of God. Amen. And increase your praise. Amen. So you got to make sure you have those things intact throughout the year. So if you didn't catch that one, check it out. on. It should be on YouTube after a while. Go on Facebook. But get that lesson too. But I uh, want to encourage you to, to start coming to Bible study. If you can't get here in person, uh, get there. Watch it online because you need word more than just once a week. Amen. Amen. You need a word every day. Uh, I believe that's it. But if you'd like to, and we're going to, it's offering time. Give God praise. It's offering time. Amen. Uh, it's another area you got to improve too is our giving. And uh, now we have even more ways that you can give electronically. We have. Amen. If, I don't know if you saw the flyers out in the lobby, but you can make your donation electronically today. Uh, go to paypal.me forward slash spirit and life. Or now you can go to Cash App. We are on Cash App now. Amen. Dollar sign spirit and life one. Spirit and life one. We have the information in the lobby. Uh, Sister Sylvia has these wonderful laminated things that you can check out. So if you like to give on Cash App or you like to give on Facebook, you can do that. Or you can just give electronically with Sister Diana right over here using your card. We can take that. Or, or you can put some cash in an envelope. If you want to put, you know, that $5,000 in an envelope, you can do that. Uh, you can write a check. Um, or you can just drop it all on us all at once. If you wanted to, you could make it rain. And <laughs> no, you don't want to make it rain. I'm not going to do that. But, you know, we would gather that up if you decide you just want to throw it up in the air. Uh, but however you want to give, you can give. We, we certainly appreciate everybody. As you're standing. <laughs> Hold that offering up in the air. It's your first one of the year. So make it a good one. Hold that offering up in the air. And just say, I am forgetting what's behind. And I'm reaching for it in 2020. Everything God has for me is mine in Jesus' name. You're in the hands of the ushers and the deacons. Please turn those cards in. I want to pray for you. Thank you all for your support for this ministry. You're making it possible for us to be here and to do what we do.
God bless you, everybody. Have a blessed week. Happy New Year.